Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you a little known trick to ensure you're getting the perfect salt for your reef tank. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And this one I feel should be a fairly quick episode. There is something that Aquaforest include with their artificial salts, and I'm fairly sure a number of other brands do as well, but uh, my local fish shop carries Aquaforest salt. So when I use artificial salt, which to be fair is unusual, I normally use natural salt water, but I do always like to have a bucket or two of artificial salt on hand, just in case I need to make up some salt water on the fly. And included free of charge with every Aquaforest bucket of salt is a very powerful little tool that I see almost no one using. So I thought I'd make this little video today just to showcase it to everyone so you can check what the elements are of your artificial salt water before you even purchase it, which is incredibly helpful to help you pick the absolutely ideal salt for your reef tank. So let's jump on down to Deer Park Aquarium now and I'll run you through the technique. Then I'll show you on my computer just because it's gonna give you a better view than if I do it on my phone, how we go about checking those parameters on Aquaforest's very own ICP. Like I said, even before you buy the salt, it will help you pick the perfect salt for your tank. Let's jump into it. All right, so when I head into my local fish shop, I can see the three different aquaforest salts here. We've got the sea salt, which is suited to uh, your fish only systems. Then we've got the reef salt, which is probably the 90% use case for most tanks. And you've got the probiotic reef salt, which is the same as reef salt with some probiotics in there. It does have an awesome photograph on the label taken by a very talented photographer though, but um, I won't go into that too much. We'll start off with the sea salt here. Let's check out the batch number and then we'll jump on the computer and I'll show you how easy it is to test the ICP results for this salt here. So 925367, let's jump on the computer. All right, so if you're in store and you're wanting to check out the batch numbers, you're just gonna rip out your phone and you're gonna put the I Aquaforest, if you can't remember the actual uh, URL, which I never do, I just search for Aquaforest uh, batch number, if you can type. That should lead you to a link here, which is their ICP OES. That will take you to this page here, which gives you a little bit of information about uh, why they do about, why they go about adding the ICP results, how they give you the results. So they mix their salt in one ton batches. Out of those one ton batches, they grab three separate samples. They mix each of those samples with 15 liters of RO and then the salt. And then they do a ICP on their ICP machine that is in house. And then they keep those results available on this database for you to check out the batch number and uh, see whether that salt is suitable for you. So starting off with our uh, sea salt, which is typically used in fish only systems, it is always a little bit lower in uh, their parameters, but perhaps you want to use it for your reef. I'm not sure. You can always check the sea salt batch numbers and you may find one that's maybe suited to your reef, perhaps. To find out, all you need to do is come across to this form here. You'll notice the first three fields are not required. You can put them in if you want, but as far as I'm concerned, there's no need. Put your batch number in there, which is uh, in this instance, 925367. I do need to tick this here and then I click results. Now, this is gonna take us to the results, the ICP results for that salt. Now remember again, this is sea salt, so the values are gonna be a little bit low and you can see that they mix the salinity up to 33 parts per thousand, when typically in a reef, we're looking at about 35. We're looking firstly at the unwanted heavy metals. We really don't want to see much here. Aluminium's got a tiny bit in there, 0 0.0034 when we're talking a range between double zero and double, oh sorry, one zero, zero one. Don't mind me, our values there are fine. And then you see the rest of our heavy metals are completely zero, so we're all good there. Into the lithium group, again, fairly small, in fact, Everything I'm scrolling through looks pretty good. The only one that's slightly over is our iron here, Fe. Typically we're looking for zero to uh, 0 0.006. This one's come back at 0 0.07. It's a little bit high, but to be honest, iron's one of those things that does uh, deplete in your aquarium pretty quickly. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Unless of course you have a high iron problem in your tank, then you probably wouldn't want to add salt that has a little bit more iron than usual. If we have a look at our nutrient groups, our phosphorus and phosphates are zero, which they should always be. Then we get down to our macro elements. These are the ones you'll probably find a little bit low for a reef system. And if we have a look here, I think our B is boron. It does test up a little bit low. Our bromide is within the range. Calcium is a little low at 352. Potassium is just within the range there at 361, but again, sea salt, not reef salt. 
Magnesium's coming up within uh, Aquaforest's range. Personally, I like to see that up around 1300, so it's a little bit low being sea salt. Sodium's fine. I think uh, it's sulfur that's coming up a little bit low. Strontium zero, which is super interesting. Um, but again, sea salt, totally fine. And you can check the other elements from there. Everything, as far as I can see, is looking pretty good. Zero, yeah, nothing to worry about there, except for maybe the iron's a touch high, but we're talking, we're sort of splitting hairs there a little bit. Let's move on, on to the next salt. All right, next up is the ever popular reef salt. Same deal again, spin the bucket around, you will find the expiry date and the batch code there, 538388. Okay, so now back to the URL. You'll notice I didn't have to go back to the homepage or search for it again or anything like that. What I really like about the way Aquaforest have done this is it suits my use case perfectly, which I know is a little bit selfish, but hey, if you can't think of yourself, who can? Now, the reason why I say that is because you don't have to reload this page or go back to the start or into the form or anything again. You can literally rapid fire that next batch number in there like I'm going to, hit results, and then you'll notice in a second, here we go, our sample number has changed and our salinity has increased to 35 parts per thousand, which is where you would keep a reef tank. Now, our alkalinity interestingly is stayed at 7.8, so it is pretty close to a natural salt water range there. I know some people like to run elevated alkalinity, so if that is you, maybe this batch is not suited to you, but for me, this is looking great. When I come down to the unwanted heavy metals here, we've got a tiny little bit of aluminium, but within the range, there's nothing else there except for a bit of SB, which I think is uh, antimony from memory. It is above the range, but um, it's pretty low to negligible, so I'm not worried about that at all. Have a look at the uh, lithium group here. I've noticed the uh, lithium is just above the bottom range, so that's good. Molybdenum is tested up as zero, but that's okay. Normally you add that if that's something you wanna put in your reef tank. Nickel is super low. In fact, it is, yep, in between their ranges. Let's have a look at that iron again. Again, it's testing up a little bit higher, but again, it's one of those things that, um, it tends to deplete out of your aquarium, so I'm not too worried about it. There's no cobalt or chromium. Jump across to the bottom here. Let's have a look at this uh, silica or silicon, I think that is. That's well within their range. Beryllium, barium, all looking good. Zinc is in their range. Vanadium's in their range. Well, it's not on this. It's off the charts. It's low. Uh, I think that's a molybdenum is uh, within their range. We've got iodine, which is a super important one to me at the moment after my iodine spike. That is considerably uh, lower than where my tank's sitting at the moment. So that would be a great addition to do a water change with this. And if we check through the rest of the elements, strontium in this one is in there. You'll notice from the uh, sea salt, that was zero. Um, it is now just above their range of uh, 8.80. We're talking 8.81, let's say uh, near enough. We're within the range there, sulfur's a touch low, sodium, magnesium's back up where I like to see it in the high 1300s. Potassium is within the range. Personally, I like to see potassium maybe closer to 400, so that would be handy if I found that on another batch. Calcium's in the range. Everything there is looking good. So um, this one's actually a touch low, but this is a good looking batch of salt. This is gonna be the one I'm probably gonna buy, but for the sake of the uh, video, let's check out the probiotic salt. And yes, you guessed it, even with the probiotic reef salt, all we need to do is spin that bucket around till we see the expiry date and then the batch code. In this case, 814294. Let's jump on the website and check it out. All right, so here we are back on my computer checking out the uh, ICP results. But again, you can do this on, the, on your phone whether, or your iPad or whatever sort of device you're using. You've got internet connectivity and you can get to this website. You are fine. And like I mentioned before, you can rapid fire away with your batch numbers here, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We pop in that next batch number there, hit results, and uh, within a second, the page updates. So we've got our new batch number. We can see the alkalinity came in at 7.8 dKH and our salinity is still at 35 parts per thousand. Heading into our unwanted heavy metals, which is this section here, we can see we've got the tiniest bit of aluminium, which is well within their ranges and nothing else, which is a good sign. Into the uh, lithium group here, we can see lithium is nicely within the uh, range there. MO, which is molybdenum, is uh, at zero, as well as nickel. So uh, both of those are probably a touch below their recommended range, but uh, typically if you're running some sort of trace element, you may be adding those anyway. Into our iron group, which is uh, one where we saw some elevator values before, you can see we do have the tiniest amount of iron there, which is a bit above the recommended value. But again, it is one of these elements that you do tend to dose to your system, and it does tend to deplete out of your tank fairly quickly. However, that being said, if you had elevated iron, this is probably not the batch for you because it is just above the uh, range. 
you'd check another few batch numbers and see if you found one that suited your needs more. But uh, cobalt, chromium, both coming up at zero. Our uh, silica is uh, within the range nicely there. We've got our uh, barium group, I think that is. They're both, uh, yep, zero is what we want there, which is beryllium, I think. Barium's neatly in the range, at the low end of the range, but within the range. Uh, we've got uh, zinc here, testing within the range. Vanadium, I think I've been calling MN uh, molybdenum, but it's actually manganese. That is within the range, it appears. Two zeros, two zeros, or maybe a touch high, but that's okay. Uh, a lot of people dose manganese, particularly zoatanks, seem to like it. So that is an interesting one. If your manganese was a touch high, maybe this is not the sort for you. Uh, iodine, which is the big important one to me at the moment, is actually a little bit below their range, which is perfect. I don't know if I do a uh, water change with this salt, it's gonna help bring my iodine levels down, which is super important for me right now. And uh, just a quick glance through the rest of the elements, they are looking good. In fact, these look very similar to the reef salt, which makes sense because I am under the impression the probiotic salt is pretty much the reef salt ground, a little bit finer and with some uh, probiotics preloaded into that salt, which become active when you mix it with water, which should help with your nitrates and phosphates, should that be an issue. So if you are... Uh, Struggling with nitrates and phosphates, this could be the batch for you, but uh, like I touched on, this page is available, it is free. The batch numbers are printed on the bucket for every single one of their salts. So um, if you're gonna spend a hundred plus dollars on a bucket of salt, why not check what it is and basically try before you buy, see where the elements are at. Makes sense to me, but like I said, I see no one doing it. So um, hopefully this helps bring this little uh, fancy trick or tip into light and uh, you guys can get your money's worth. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope that simple little trick will help you in the future to pick the perfect salt for your reef tank. Like I said, it's completely free. It's included with every bucket of salt on uh, Aquaforest's range, and it's printed on the outside of the packaging now. So it's not like you have to buy it and then you can do the ICP. You can literally be in store checking batch numbers to find the perfect bucket of salt for your reef tank. And why not? I mean, we put such investment into our reef tank, you wanna make sure you're getting the salt that's gonna suit your needs perfectly. So once you've narrowed things down from uh, sea salt to reef salt to probiotic salt, you can then dive that little bit deeper and check out each of those batch numbers to make sure that that salt is exactly what you're after. If you've got any questions, comments, feedback at all, feel free to pop in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there. So it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, I'll leave you with it. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.